Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, we're gonna add this printing. If I hold down the shift key, the player is moving faster. And to do that, we have to open up the controls that we have created recently. Under the player action map, we need to add a new action for sprinting using the plus icon. Let's call it sprint. We have the action type. So if we have a continuous action, like holding the shift key, it is recommended to use value or pass through. Then we can select a trigger for this action, which is holding the shift key from the properties window. We can listen to the binding when I hold the left shift and here it is. Then we can save this asset using save asset. And let's open up the player inputs manager. If you haven't watched my first videos about adding the new input system, make sure to check it out. Basically, we have to add this void on sprint function. Make sure to use the same name of the input action that we have created, which takes in an input value and call it value. Then we need to create a variable so that we can use it later on to check if we are sprinting or not. Then we can use our action to change its value. Sprint equals value then dot is pressed now we can use it for our robot controller script. In our previous video, we have added a logic to change our character to a ball. I don't want to add the sprint feature to it. That's why we need to change that under the move normal function. We have created the speed variable. By default, it is set to zero. And when we start moving, we have assigned the value move speed. We can add another if else statement to check if we have sprinting enabled or not. I'm gonna cut this line of code and use if input dot sprint in such case we will change the speed to another speed that is higher we're gonna call it sprint speed and if we are not holding the shift key we're gonna use the move speed which we have created on top and it is eight let's duplicate this line of code i have used Control d and call this sprint speed like 11 i think it's okay for now we have the normal speed and if I hold down the shift key, you see it has changed. But we haven't changed the speed of the animation. And to do that, we have to go under the animator component. Recently, we have added this blend tree that blends between the idle and the walking animation according to the speed parameter. Now we want to add the run animation, but this character doesn't come with a run animation. We could simply use the walk loop animation and change its speed from the properties window. So let's select this blend tree and add the third motion using the plus icon. Add motion, we will use the same walk loop animation from our project. We can select it from here and drag it to our third motion. Luckily we have this field to change the animation speed. I'm gonna change it to two. And let's test it by selecting the blend tree and the play button. For now the speed is set to one and that's the value to trigger the third animation. As you can see, he's so fast. We can modify this parameter to adjust the player speed. For now, he's idle. Then we're gonna set it to the walking animation. And if we are sprinting, we are going to change it to one. I guess he's so fast. Let's change the speed to 1.5. And instead of using the threshold between zero and one, I'm gonna use zero and two because we have used the range 0, 1 to change the speed of the player when he's walking using the AWST keys. To do that, we can uncheck automate thresholds and change the threshold to be between 0, 1, and 2. Then we can get back to the code. Under the move normal function, we have used animator.setFloat to change the speed parameter. When we are moving, the magnitude of the move vector is 1. That's why we have the transition between idle and walk. The same thing, we can change this value according to whether we are sprinting or not using if input.sprint. In such case, we're gonna set it to two so that we can switch to the run animation. Otherwise, using else, we're gonna change the speed using the input.move.magnitude as usual. And let's hit save. And there you go, now we have added the sprint feature. I'm holding the shift key and the animation has changed. If I release it, we are in the normal moving animation. We have added this feature to change the character to a ball. Of course, we can't use the sprint feature here 
because we have added that under our move normal function and before I finish this video I'm gonna show you another way to implement this if else statement I think it's a little bit long we can write one line of code that implement the same logic using speed equals then we add the condition which is input dot sprint and the question mark if this condition is true we're gonna set it to the sprint speed then we add colon and the other condition so if it's false we're gonna use the move speed because we are not sprinting and that's the same logic of these lines of code let's get rid of it instead of writing all these lines of code let's use this line and here we're gonna pass in our new form using input dot sprint then question mark if this is true we're going to set it to 2 otherwise we're gonna use the magnitude of the move vector and let's hit save again and see if we have the same results I can use the shift key to sprint I have noticed one problem if I hit shift and I'm not moving we have this uh, run animation and that's because we are setting the speed even if we are not moving we can cut this line of code and put it inside this if statement when the move vector is not zero then we can change the speed parameter otherwise using else I'm gonna set it to zero so that we can play the idle animation so I think that's pretty much it guys for this video I hope you like it if you have any question or comments about this project make sure to write it under the comment section down below and I will see you in the next one